of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless? And have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer. Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to this son of his, whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, 
hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Some scholars say that Simeon was 270 years old and was blind. Now we can debate his age and ability to see, but what is certain is that scripture introduces Simeon to us as a man led by the Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us he had the Holy Spirit upon him. That reveals a lot about his message. He has something important to say. Simeon cries out, my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon experienced an inner seeing. He did not have to see with his eyes. He saw with the eyes of the heart. He saw with the eyes of the heart what God had in store for his people. No matter how you approach it, this day is about shadow and light. 
It is the light of Christ in our lives that makes the difference between a meaningless cycle of events and a life of unlimited meaning. Simeon is grateful to God. He's grateful that he has seen the light for revelation to the Gentiles and also for the glory of Israel. The word of God had not yet been revealed to the Gentiles and the Israelites struggled with keeping the covenant with God. Simeon recognizes that the light has entered the world and it will shine in all the corners of the world. It will dispel all darkness. The light of Christ casts no shadow. It casts no shadow because it penetrates. It will penetrate the Gentiles. It will penetrate the Israelites. And it will penetrate our lives. Anna's testimony is very similar to Simeon's. Just as Simeon had been awaiting the consolation of Israel, Anna had been looking to the redemption of Jerusalem. This event means that the person of Christ and his mission are already attested by three kinds of witnesses. First, by the angels who proclaim his coming. Then by the shepherds, after the angels appeared to them. And finally, by Simeon and Anna, moved by the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus' first visit of many to the temple. It is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Malachi, who prophesied, suddenly come to the temple, the Lord whom you seek. When Jesus was presented in the temple, everything foreseen in Malachi was already beginning to unfold. Jesus replaced the temple and replaced the feasts that celebrated there. His death on the cross would be the pure priestly sacrifice pleasing to God. And when the priests of the new covenant would make that sacrifice present during the sacrifice of the mass, it would be the pure sacrifice from the east to the west that would please God. Through Simeon's eyes, we too have seen the salvation of God, which he prepared for all the nations and revealed as the glory of the new Israel, which is ourselves. As Simeon was released from the bonds of this life when he had seen Christ, so we too were at once freed from our old state of sinfulness by the sacrifice of the cross. By faith, we too embraced Christ, the salvation of God the Father, as he came to us from heaven and revealed himself to us in a manger in Bethlehem. Gentiles before, we have now become the people of God. Our eyes have seen God incarnate, and because we have seen him present among us and have spiritually received him into our arms, into our hearts, we are called the new Israel. Today, the true light has come, the light that shines every person who is born into this world. Let us ask God to enlighten us, to make us radiant by this light, to illuminate us so that we are pleasing in his sight. Let us pray that we all share in its splendor and be so filled with it that no one remains in the darkness. Let us be shining and filled with God's love as we go together to meet and to receive with the aged Simeon and Anna, and Anna the light whose brilliance is eternal. Rejoicing with Simeon and Anna, let us raise our voices in thanksgiving to God, the Father of the light, who sent the true light to dispel the darkness and to give us all a share in his splendor. Those who, like Simeon and Anna, persevere in their devotion and in the service of God, become good messengers through whom the Holy Spirit can bring others to know Christ. Pope Francis reminds us, one cannot proclaim the gospel of Jesus without the tangible witness of one's life. This is a call to see with different eyes. It is a call to see with the eyes of Simeon. It is a call to see with the eyes of the Christ. After hearing the prophecies of Simeon and Anna, the Holy Family returned home to Nazareth. And Luke tells us that the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. 
This short verse actually provides a deeper look into the core of family. If the family is not at the heart of love and life, if the family is not the school of love where we learn the basics of life, where we ourselves are loved and taught to love and care for those around us, growth, strength, and wisdom cannot flourish. In St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, he tells us the qualities of the Christian family. The Christian family clothes itself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. It also forgives each member just as the Lord forgives. This gives us a glimpse of the Holy Family. The home of the Holy Family was one of worship and prayer, where they recognized their dependence on God and on each other. We are to model our families in this way. Our prayers do not have to be elaborate. Simple things like mealtime prayers and prayers at bedtime when the joys and challenges of the day are put to rest. A simple blessing and wish for success as family members leave and enter the home. Mary and Joseph played an important role in the life of Jesus, and they have set the bar for us and our families. The Christian family is meant to be a place where faith in Jesus Christ is naturally handed on and nurtured daily. All the textbooks and lessons we study can never make up for the work of the parents. And parenting is hard work because it has to wrestle the peer demands of society while serving as a guide to the teachings of Christ. The Christian family is meant to be a haven, a refuge for others in what sometimes can be a very hard and heartless world. So let us take time to thank God not only for the examples set for us by the Holy Family, but for our own families as well. Let us pray for the family of the body of Christ, that in this community of believers, a safe haven can be found where the peace of Christ rules in our hearts and where the word of Christ is embraced as the true gift of God that it is. With gratitude in our hearts, may we come to the Eucharist as God's family, his chosen, his chosen ones, holy and beloved. The Lord be with you. And my almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us go in peace. God bless you.